Welcome into the latest edition of Extra Time. As always, thank you very much for your tweets. Shaka Hislop and Julian Laurent with us to answer your questions. Jules is on, so there must be a question about Griezmann. Jules, will we see Griezmann move clubs next season or during the winter transfer window? He's not start for Barcelona's past two games. In case you weren't paying attention, Jules. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I saw, I saw that. Uh, I really thought, he really thought he would, he would start in the Clasico. He didn't. Barca are saying like they're not going to sell him, you know, he's not for sale. Maybe he would want to leave, that's another issue. I, the thing is, I think he really wants to succeed there. I think he really wants to, be, to become a big player for them. This is a club that, as you know, he wanted to join before, it didn't happen, then it happened again. And, but I think he really, he really wants to make it there. It's just, I'm not sure, I think one, time is running out, and two, I'm not sure that will happen anyway. So maybe he would have to reconsider at some point and, and maybe decide to go, or at least see what's out there, if he can maybe move to, to somewhere else. But it's just, a, it's just a situation where you're not really sure how he will come out of it, how the club will come out of it, and, and what's going to happen. You do feel if he'll make it there, he'll make it anywhere. Uh, meanwhile, Shaka, did Shaka Yay. impede Schmeichel? How did you react to players trying to impede you? This, of course, the goal uh, that was chalked off in the Arsenal-Leicester game. Yeah, I, I, I don't think there, there was much impeding going on there, personally. But it's, uh, and it's, it's a little bit different now, but it was part of, it's part of the territory back in the day. You would always have at least one player on you. If you used to come for crosses a lot, um, the, the opposition would put two or three just to stand in a little box around you so you, 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 couldn't, you, you couldn't come out anyway. So you'd be getting calls all day long by, by well, the rules we saw on the weekend. Um, but it's just kind of part and parcel of, of how, how the game was played back then and you had to figure out a way, a way out of that little box. Simple as that. And of course, we spoke about this before. You could get away with a little bit more back then as well, Shaka. You could go up for a high ball with the whole height knee up, couldn't you, to catch the striker or the elbows as well. Did you ever really take someone yeah. out? I, I, I don't remember really taking somebody out. Um, I do remember playing, uh, I, think it was, I, think it was, I think it was playing for West Ham. Um, come in a long way out for one. I gave, played Coventry, and, and I can't remember. The, the, Coventry had two Egyptian strikers, I think, at the time. Um, and, and I came a long way to the edge of, edge of my box and realized I wasn't getting there. So I, I just made, and, and again, you could get away with this back in the day. I was like, I am just going to punch him square in the head here. I, I hope <laughs> it is enough to put him off. <laughs> and, and that's exactly what happened. I just leathered him right to the top of the head. His header went wide. Goal kick. Happy days. <laughs> wow, Shaq. That's brilliant. <laughs> oh. If in doubt, swing a punch. That's today's lesson, kids. Yeah. Uh, Jules, without mm -hmm. trying to be biased. Good, good, good. Uh, sorry. Uh, without trying to be biased, where do you think PSG would finish if they are in the Premier League? So with, without being biased, I think, well, if I say they can win it, then I'm going to get abused so much tomorrow and everything like that. So I've, I'm not going to say that. Don't buckle, Jules. They finish top three. They've, I think they finish top three, sometimes third, sometimes second, sometimes first. Eh? That's, uh, that's the best answer I can give you. <laughs> it's a terrible answer. Last season, for example, <laughs> last couple of seasons, they'd have finished third, yeah, behind Liverpool, Manchester City. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, uh, certainly no two seasons ago. I think last season they might have finished second behind Liverpool because I don't think City were, were very good last season at all. Uh, two seasons ago and three seasons ago, I think, yeah, third, no problem. This season now, I mean, they're not playing well in France either, but this, this season, season when this it's, it looks weird. quite more open in, in England, so yeah, anyone maybe. Can win this season. Uh, Jules, I know you're a fan of yeah. Mesut Ozil. Will, he ever, will we ever see him at a top club again, or is he destined for MLS? Oh, that's, that's harsh on MLS. You know, he, he can go to MLS if he, if he wants to be there, if he, you know, if he has the motivation, the right attitude and everything. Then I think MLS 
should welcome him and, and I think it could be a good addition to that league. For the rest, it all dep for me, it's, and, and it's always been the case with Meza, it, will, it always depended on him anyway. How much money he wants, how much he really wants to, to work hard, to be able to, to play again in a, in a top league, in a top club. It's, it's all about that. I mean, I've always thought it was, it was a lot only down to him anyway, what he really wanted, what kind of mood he was in, if he really wanted to work hard, if he didn't, or, or the opposite, if he was not ready to work hard, if he was you know, ready to be a passenger, if he wanted to be a leader. All those questions, they're still very relevant now. And I think maybe that was part of the issue at Arsenal. And certainly if he wants to go to another top club, let's say in Germany, if he wants to come back home and go to a top club again there, he will have to show that he's ready for it. You can't just go, especially on the money he's on, and be a passenger or just be there and say like, yeah, I'm just happy to train like this, easy, not really taking maybe seriously, not being you know, fully committed. That's not going to work like this. So I think it depends a lot on him. Shaka, should Liverpool sign Ubermecano in the winter transfer window as an immediate replacement for Van Dijk or wait until the summer for Ubermecano's release clause to activate? Cool. Um, how much is that release clause? 700 million. <laughs> yeah, well, well, then, well, then sign him in January for 600. Save yourself 100 million. Um, right now, let, let's, see, let's see how, how Liverpool cope with, without, without Van Dijk. Um, as, as you mentioned, in this extra time alone, uh, the league is, is, is wide open. Um, and, and maybe they, they have enough to, to, to cope. Certainly, we'll know by January. If not, sign him. I, I listen, I, I think Uwe Meccano is an incredible talent, um, and, and many big clubs will be chasing it. If you can get yourself to the head of the queue in, in, in January, it might be worth your while. Um, but who knows? Depend, no, that all depends on, on, on. Good, thanks, Jack. No, I'm, no, no, I'm just saying. It depends on what you get him for and what that release clause is. <laughs> well, as, as we, we, let's ask decision. our resident journalist who should know these figures, Jules. Is it 80 million? I think it's 80 million euros. Don't isn't sound that it? convinced. It increased to the 60 million that it was before. But the, the thing with Upamecano, one, let's say Leipzig at top of the table in January. Good luck to signing. Upamecano from them because they will say, "Hang on a minute, we can win. You know, we we, we can compete with Bayern." No, we can maybe Jules, win this they let league. Timo Werner go when they could have won the uh, Champions League. No, 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 no. The release clause for Timo Werner was paid, and then it happened that, unfortunately, because of the pandemic, the Champions League was played outside of the season's date. So to keep him, they. A lot of things needed to happen. They need to, needed his permission, Chelsea's permission. It was complicated. But in a normal season, he would have been there and he would have played with them. They didn't, they didn't sell him when they could have won the Champions League. However, with the Bambicano, it could be different for the league. So they might, they might want far more money than, than, than what the release clause is because they say, hang on, it's too important for us, especially in a season where we can actually win something. But I still think that Van Dijk is 29. Let, go and get Upamecano now. Come on. It, it makes a lot of sense. Final question. It's a good one, Shaka. Time to have a go at some journalists. In the light of Pogba's feud with the press, did you ever have problems with the press printing fake news or something else about you that wasn't <laughs> true? No. None. Surely. Everything the press said. I thought you. And it wasn't great. Shaka, didn't you tell me a story you called the press Very out true. once about something? Or have I completely made that up? Was that somebody else? I call the press out. Yeah. No, oh. not, not, not I can recall. Oh, must be someone else. Um, I remember a silly story, but that, that was in the that was in the Sun back in my Reading days, and they kind of kind of expected it from the Sun. In all honesty. Well, what was the story? So it, it didn't bother me in the slightest. Huh? What was the story? <laughs> you got us intrigued now, Shaq. Was it about punching? No, people? no, it, no. It, it, it was, it was, it was ridiculous. We had played, we played away to Burnley, I think, and it, it was freezing cold, and we we won two one. I actually played quite well, but this report, and, and I remember, I remember the name, a, a lady by the name of Janine Self. I, I, for some reason, I remember that still. <laughs> um, wrote this long match report, talking about how I was from Trinidad and I couldn't cope with the cold weather. Mind you, we just won to one and I just played really well. So it, it didn't make much sense. But that, that was the only, t only thing I can remember that 
really was just so far off the mark that, um, that you know, to, to say it was true. Other than that, you know, I, I don't recall anything being any more egregious than that. Janine Self, watch yourself, eh? Uh, Jules, have you ever had to <laughs> apologize for something that you've written? Oh, so many times. I mean, there's a difference between making something up, like in this case with Pogba and saying that he had quit the national team, and then writing an article who, where you criticize a player, for example, players, despite what some are saying, they know exactly what's being written about them or said, whether it's on TV or on radio, so they, they know pretty well. So there's a difference between the two, and they're quite sensitive at times with what's written on them when it's critical about something, not fake news or not making something up. And I remember Gibril Sissé one day, when he was still at Auxerre, before coming to Liverpool, not happy with something that I wrote, and coming, coming to see me when we were on national team duties and said, John, should we go for a fight? And I was like, mm, I don't think, I don't fancy, I don't, think, I, don't, I don't think so, really. And it was really cross. I mean, I had the Oxham manager calling me and saying, you're a piece of crap. Wow. Uh, but my story was a great story. It was a really good story as well. And I said to Jibril, I said, come on, man. You, you know, it was after a game. I still remember it so well. After a game with Oxham against Marseille, in Marseille as well. And he's from there, obviously. And he missed so many chances, and there were plenty of times where, instead of shooting, he should have he should have passed the ball. For example, there were better options than him shooting. But he was so obsessed with scoring against the team that he supported as a kid that I think he lost all sense of awareness and focus and concentration. He was just shooting, shooting, shooting all the time. Yeah. So I wrote I wrote a really good piece, and he was not happy at all. Man, I, I laugh about it, and he still he does yeah. laugh about it now. But yeah, on the time he said, "Should we go for a fight?" I like I will pass on this one, Jibril. Yeah, I think that's fair enough. Would you like to go for a fight, <laughs> Julia? No, I wouldn't actually. Today. Thank you, Mr. C. C. It's cool, you know. I don't things to do as well that day so oh, I don't think I, I don't think I've ever had to apologize to footballers for anything else when I was young I worked for the BBC and I had to apologize to a young cricketer in Cornwall because I said that he was a cheat that one didn't go down very well I was only young oh. <laughs> that's it that brings us to the end of today's show uh, Jules and Shaka thank you very much as always we will be back tomorrow for more uh, until then goodbye